So, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Grigori, I'm from the MPS team, and uh, I will tell you about uh, possibly one of the biggest upcoming features of MPS, the new type system as well. Uh, so, um, I will cover the manipulation behind the replacing the existing type system aspect, uh, about the formal background of the new on the framework behind the new aspect that is called Codus, uh, about the, its uh, main features, its crucial user facing features, and uh, at the end I will say a few words about the current status of the current work and uh, Language from this formalism. 
uh, it is a CHR for short. So CHR is a declarative rule based language. It has a well-defined semantics. Uh, it is an academic development that dates back to the beginning of the 90s, I believe. And uh, uh, from this time, it has accumulated a large body of uh, literature. There is a book uh, about it. Uh, and uh, it uh, also has accumulated a certain experience of uh, when it is good, when uh, each problem is uh, It is better uh, at solving. And uh, uh, so it uh, suited uh, very well our purpose. And uh, <coughs> so let's look at its basic notions because when you understand uh, them, uh, you basically understand what the problem is. So there are constants and variables. Uh, constants are some basic facts or relations between the types. Uh, uh, in your type system, and rules actually have this meaning, like two is constants, uh, rules uh, is what processes constants. It is uh, better seen on the example, uh, so these programs are in the abstract CHI syntax, it's quite concise, not uh, good for demonstration, so um, a rule consists from the head uh, and uh, from the body. So when there is a uh, Con a constant available, uh, the rule matches on it and uh, uh, produces some effort. So, the first rule will match on the other constant and will fulfill the parent relationship between the same. Um, so, uh, rules uh, can also discard constants, uh, which is uh, signified by a <coughs> slash. So uh, the fourth, the last one, the first program, uh, it starts in the duplicate signal relationship. Uh, and uh, loops can also have guides, some applicability conditions. Uh, the second program, which consists of a single loop, uh, um, has a guide, which is, uh, well, when the school is applied, when n is less than or equal n, it discards the, the number which is not in the So, uh, and in the second program, the mean constant uh, it means uh, something like uh, this is a candidate mean. So, and the program is first the code mean. And uh, let's see how the first program works in the actual data. So, when they feed uh, some constants to, to this program, it uh, in first the parent relationship with the first rules, it uh, infers the parent relationship between the uh, entities, between the algorithms of constants. Then the third rule will be applied and uh, infer infers the sibling relationship. Uh, and uh, then the last rule will just remove the duplicate uh, sibling constant. So the purpose uh, of this program in for siblings, and I uh, hope the example is clear. And uh, now let's uh, move closer, closer to our domain, to domain of type systems. And uh, this is where the code rules example, code rules syntax. It is an actual rule from the base language type system for the checking, the checking assignment expression. So here we see the constants in use. Uh, the type of constant just uh, signifies that a certain node has a certain type. And uh, when uh, uh, the types of L value and R value are known, the school will match to the applied. And uh, with the help of converts to constant, it will check that uh, R type is a type of uh, L type. So converts to uh, the constant converts to uh, the um, signifies uh, means the general type in relationship. So uh, yes. So the on is the head from before the activate is the body. Uh, so can I repeat please? The on blah 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 is the head. Uh, no, the head uh, is what. Uh, 
Yes, it is the head. Uh, on this constant, much of this constant, it is the head. And yeah. the body is uh, the activate part, yes. Okay. The term is just variable declarations. Uh, the term, yes, it is a, a logical variable. I will come to this. So uh, now we can think of that as a type variable from the old system as well. Um, so, and then converts to constant is activated in a type <coughs> that is a uh, subtype annihilation which is present. Uh, then uh, the type of constant of the whole sign expression is produced and uh, the program something continues. Uh, yes. Uh, can you go back again, please? Yes. The converts to acts as a guard here, correct? Uh, no, uh, this rule is without guard. Uh, the guard is uh, like on, it is a head, the guard will be aware of guard. Okay. Uh, there will be an example with the guard. But if it, so if it doesn't be, convert, it's still, the type of is still. Uh, uh, no, uh, if it doesn't convert, the rule, uh, the rule fails at this point. And that's what I meant by guard, you kind of. If, ah, it doesn't, it is, if, that does, if not all in the activate apply, well, uh, the guards are simple predicates. They are okay. kind of simple. So okay. it is a general. Okay. Yes, it is a, uh, and, and because in the converts, both R type and L type have values, they act as a check as opposed to an inference on the. The type of is an inference because the AE doesn't have a type yet. That, that's similar to the existing type system. Uh, well, uh, actually, it depends on how you write the system. Uh, in this language, there are only this. Uh, Type variables will already uh, you have values. Maybe another question: Would something change if you switched converts to and type of on the last line? Uh, right, type of so first and converts with then uh, well into words the type system will be inconsistent because you will produce the type of with a free variable then some will be match on this. Well, it will be just a mistake in this case. Mm -hmm. So if one of the Clauses in activate fails because the solver cannot produce a match. Uh, yes. Um, then, then do all of the clauses not apply, or does it go sequentially and only the one after the failure? That's what you asked here, okay, right? Basically. Kind of but this after is uh, not applied. What is before? Well, it has been applied. Already. Okay, so it's not transactional in that sense. Yes. Okay. So the order is relevant. Um, uh, if uh, something in the body fails, uh, then uh, there can be uh, another part of the body, like uh, like an else branch, where you can output an error, for example. Uh -huh. So, uh, yes, uh, we, everything, everything that is made is not applied, so, and it is not in, not transaction. Um, and to be clear, there is no solver. Uh, the whole type system is defined only by you. So converts to relationship is to define by you. There are rules that uh, yeah, you know, evaluate there are rules that compute this relationship. So type of and converts is a function that I write. Yes. Okay. So but there must be a solver that that uh, tries to unify. Yes, uh, yes, of course. There is a basic uh, yeah. solver with uh, yes, with basic logical yeah. relationships. Uh, so let's move on. Uh, but <laughs> you have another question. You know, about <laughs> yes, no. Okay, very quick one. Okay. Is, the, is the language implementation architected in a way where I can define my own syntactic extensions to this language? Uh, what do you mean with syntactic extensions? Well, for example, if I don't want to have the generic on activate thing, but just a, a new language concept that says assume subtype A, comma B. I'm just making something up. Um, so is this whole system extensible, not just by defining new predicates, but just by building a, well, an NPS language extension on top of it? Well, uh, at this point, there are no embedded predicates, no such functionality, so you, now you have to define uh, all the rules. You have okay, to write I own language. I can create my own language and generate this language out of my own language. Will it work? Well, I suppose. Because there, there are languages in MPS where you can do this, there are languages in MPS where you can't. Yeah. For example, you can extend the base language, of course, but you can't meaningfully extend the build so and generate language. language. Uh, so, so, I, I, yes. 
So I guess the question that Markus is asking is, is there anything generated from this that's executed, or are these models interpreted so that the interpreter needs to know all the concepts of the language? Okay, so when you write these, this type system, right, do you generate Java code or whatever out of this that is then executed by the engine, or do you iterate through the model and interpret the AST nodes in the MPS? Uh, Java code generated. Okay. And then we should be able to do it. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, so, uh, uh, typically, the library shows uh, this uh, formal basis for codes. Because if this has a well defined snake, so uh, uh, when you write your type system with this written code, you can be sure that it behaves as expected. You can read the formalism, how it behaves, how the programs uh, are evaluated, and uh, what we will be sure in how it generally works, as opposed to the opaque uh, like, uh, system type engine. Uh, so when you have the complete freedom of the definition of your type system, you are not restricted to uh, some embedded uh, some type in relationship, you define your, your as you And uh, type system uh, type systems are actually naturally expressed as a set of declarative flows. So such a declarative logical language is a variable suited for our purpose. Uh, and uh, let's uh, now see what are the features of Codus, which integrate the basic semantics of CHI into the framework of MPS. Uh, uh, so, uh, what you write is actually not the rules which are applied, but the rule templates. So, the evaluation and the uh, running of the type system is actually a two stage process. The first stage is uh, applying rule templates to the concepts. Uh, and uh, this stage generates a time, a time presentation, uh, a program, Codus program, which is uh, then applied to the second stage. So, uh, this rule is from the experimental control flow aspect for base language. Uh, and uh, so, the template part is uh, the header, like matching local variable declaration. It is uh, similar to legacy type system where you write your rules for specific concepts. You can have some more elaborate uh, applicability condition there with a general Java code. And because you write rule templates, you can have fabricated Java code in the body uh, of the rule. So, uh, uh, for example, here, the write constraint will be activated, will be a part of the rule, only when it initializes the path. So, uh, with the root templates, you have a new macro flexible. So, this is basically a code generator that outputs the rules for your type system? Uh, yes. Uh, then, uh, uh, there are logical variables that are crucial for any logical inference. And uh, the logical variable is very similar to the legacy type system uh, type variables. A uh, logical variable can be in one of the two states, either here or bound, bound variable is immutable, and another important concept is unification, and unified variables uh, variable share the state, and uh, unification is better seen in examples. In the simple case, when the variables are unified, well, they share the state, and when one of them becomes bound, the other will to become bound uh, to the same way. Um, so, type of uh, logical variables can represent, uh, represent catalog types and can be used for typing. But where the power of unification is really uh, seen is uh, the case of complex unification of composite terms. In the second example, uh, the G, F, and H uh, are some composite terms. And after the unification finds the right substitution for all the type variables inside. So, uh, so A will be bound to H from C and B will be unified with U. Uh, and this machine, uh, the 
applications, uh, for example, push improvement for automatic type inference like in functional languages. And uh, speaking about composite terms, you can of course define your own uh, data, uh, they are called data forms or simple terms. Um, they are simple immutable kinds of data structures. Uh, uh, the produce uh, operates uh, uh, on on the terms or the types uh, on the runtime are represented by data forms. And uh, well, on the right uh, side of the slide, you can see the example example declaration of the classified type and long type. Um, and uh, they are also used in pattern matching, which is uh, very similar to pattern matching functional languages. And uh, it, uh, for example, uh, this functionality can be used in the case where legacy, in the legacy type system we used when concrete block and in the mind the exact structure of type. And uh, here you just write types which expect, or you write rules which expect uh, the types of certain structure. So the first rule will match only on the one. What is the lower bound type here again? Uh, well, uh, it is uh, something super. Something. It is an in internal representation of. Uh, Maybe I just don't see it, but where in this example do we see a data form? Uh, the lower bound type is a data form declared. Uh, it's like function call, so I'm trying to. Uh, well, it is a. a constructor. It is a constructor of, uh, of a data form, yes. So on the previous slide. What's that on the previous slide? Uh, this is declarations. declarations. Where does it say lower bound type? Uh, it is it? only two examples. Okay. All right. so they are much okay. more. All right. Uh, and uh, the predicates, embedded predicates. Uh, so predicates are used uh, in two roles. They either check conditions and will guard. There is an example of a guard. Uh, so, or they used to assert some properties in bytes. Uh, so if uh, in the body uh, predicate fails, then uh, the rule fails and there you get uh, some the chicken error. And the basic embedded predicates from which you build all your relationships in the time system. Um, there is modification which I already covered. The quality just checks that the terms are structured the same and the values that they use they are the same. Uh, then there is substitution which works exactly as expected. And there is general purpose about predicate uh, which you can use when existing things are not enough uh, and uh, from about you can call something to some utilities of the type system. And well uh, there is of course uh, utility for debugging. Evaluation base contains all the all the history of uh, program evaluation, all the snapshots of logical variables during the evaluation. Uh, it can be accessed from highlighted areas and it has jump fair to functionality. So uh, and uh, well that's <coughs> Of course, not all the features, but uh, probably the main one is to get a few of how the language looks like and how it can use it. Uh, and the uh, code rules is expressive. It is not only to even complete, it has all the necessary machinery for logical inference. And uh, we have also samples for various type systems. Uh, for example, uh, so code rules can be used to implement Type inference, uh, so yes. Are there non advanced that was available? <laughs> no, of course. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. There are simple samples. So there is a and simple is not non by type group. There is an undercapus and not undercapus. <laughs> there is everything yeah. in place. And uh, there is also a constant country on this book. Uh, basically, it's the same. It's a few from simple examples to more complex ones. Because the runtime you know, the have of rules is basically the constant handling rules. So, uh, so you can implement automatic type inference, like for example in Haskell, 
and uh, you have an example of this, you have an example of the chicken uh, husky type classes. So, uh, type classes is a cornerstone feature of uh, husky type system, and husky type system is quite advanced one. So, this example was a kind of uh, proof of concept that code loose is uh, usable and expressible enough even for the complex use cases for complex type systems. You can express line types for your programs for languages and line types are very useful and you know, need to, to have some strict control with the location to location for resources, for example, as in Rust programming language. And you can even try to implement dependent types and if, you, <laughs> <laughs> if you need a very strict language with very strict control. Uh, everything is in place and uh, And uh, so a few words about current status uh, and uh, in the world map. First of all, the agnostic dates, agnostic schedule. Uh, but uh, the first stage when the code rules will be released as a plugin is uh, planned approximately for this winter. Uh, uh, with the plugin, will, uh, it, will also, it will also include the new type system for base language. At the second stage, uh, when all the extensions of the language will be like, migrated to the type system, we will uh, include codes for the part of MPS core. And uh, when we get some feedback, some, when we will see that the code is stable enough, uh, it uh, will become the way to define the type system, and the legacy type system will actually become legacy. And uh, so, of course, it will be preserved for compatibility. The build compatibility. Uh, how you migrate your language? Uh, so, there is no location. You need to. You <laughs> 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 need uh, basically to implement the type system, but uh, well, these systems are, are just different. So, uh, there are some considerations when you have several languages. Uh, I will expand uh, each other or use to do that. Uh, I will not expand on them now, they will look out in a proper release now, so just for you to know. Um, and uh, what's uh, now, what we are working now on uh, the new type system for base language is basically done, but there are still some gaps. Uh, we need to implement new system, new type system. Extensions. They are, they are broken, the intermediate is ongoing, so the system will be in fast, uh, however, uh, your models. Uh, so, uh, uh, because uh, there's difference with legacy type system, and that you know, there's no uh, direct mapping between the rules you write and the concepts uh, that uh, are in your model in the language. Uh, there is a heuristic for reporting the check and errors. Uh, it is good enough for most purposes and it outputs the errors where they are manly. But if you see that they are not, you can manually specify where to output the check and error. And uh, in this aspect, uh, it is, uh, there is, is uh, some room for improvement in terms of the bit. And uh, there is also a question of translating. Uh, the type annotations from a source model to the internal representation of terms or in code rules program. And uh, at the end of running the checker, you need to turn terms back to type annotations. And uh, uh, now some boilerplate code is required for that, but uh, we are thinking on how to make it better. And that's uh, basically it. Uh, and now, at this point, you can download source code and build it uh, with uh, all the samples. Uh, the building process is quite trivial. So, and uh, there is a site with a um, very good, uh, quite complete documentation and uh, an explanation of samples. So, we encourage you to try it, to download, try it to. Give us some feedback and to let us know about the thoughts. So, thank you. Yes? In better 
talked about it, I think last year, he said that at this point it's about 10 times slower than the existing type system. So what about performance and scalability? Well, now performance is uh, on par with Vivo, okay. and the given incrementality it will be no slower. Mm -hmm. So it is much better now. More questions? Could you also use it for completely different purposes? For instance, uh, making interpreters or <laughs> well, it's still incomplete. And <laughs> well, you can implement uh, other kinds of static analysis, for example, control flow analysis, there is an ensemble to the So, I think that's what it is. <laughs> Genuinely, yeah. that chicken is just uh, making purpose. So, you put out there, uh, so you can also create a transformation, meaning. Uh, find those that create new nodes in the model and change state nodes. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm a little bit. It's still the same. How how the the state of the nodes and in this model relate to the state structure that we have so reason about in the model. So. Uh, yes, uh, mm, the, so the two stages, the first stage is uh, applying the data from the tool to the, the source code. And at this stage, you uh, uh, the patch phenomenon or the type annotations in the source code uh, serve as a link to the program. Then the check is done completely in the ground. And at the end, you, uh, uh, well, you construct the implementations from turning terms and yes you modify your source model, your sign types to, uh, to the nodes coming on. So, yeah, so, it, uh, so it's yeah. not necessarily the type information that is the idea. Yes, yeah, it could also be like on the So you can also so uh, for now there is uh, no general machine for that and there is now machine so when you say it's intended for type checking, did, did you build anything on top of these constraint pending pending rules that makes it specifically suitable or easy for type checking? I mean, what did you add to the general framework except all the syntax for generating these these CHR, the rules themselves? So uh, constraint pending rules uh, semantics doesn't include unification logical variables. Does not. Does not. Does not. So, okay. unification and logical variables, which are not necessarily logical inference. Yeah. Uh, so, we done this logical inference. Basically, it's a general purpose term, and it is sufficient. But does it ship with a set of predefined, I guess, mm -hmm. predicates or functions like type of, subtype? Is there is there already a kind of set of. No. No. Okay. And is that intentional, or just you didn't get around to doing uh, it yet? Or? Split will be so for now. No. Uh, I guess the compared performance you talked about was uh, execution performance. Yeah, how about memory performance? Uh, how about memory performance? Uh, no specific numbers, but uh, it is uh, well, it's the same order. As the yes. um, asking the types of certain nodes in different contexts, for example, doing this from the editor or from the generator, from different uh, places. Sometimes with the old type uh, type system, you didn't always get the same result. I think is that also um, um, is that solved in this type system? Uh, it, uh, certainly. Current uh, tests uh, are written in such a way so local uh, type checking for both language, for example, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that queries will return at the same time. So it is better. Is the new type system supposed to also replace the checking rules? 
so the legacy, the old time system will be split on the time system, the long time system part, and the long time system part uh, will remain. Uh, will remain. So that makes sense. Okay. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. And uh, we use split this, can I make a suggestion? <laughs> a feature request? <laughs> <laughs> It might apply to the new type system as well. The, the messages you output right now, they're recorded with strings. It would be nice if they could be objects so that you can transport data and then only render it with to string in the editor, but you have other data available for further processing. If you could touch it anyway, maybe that's an idea. Uh, that's <laughs> What time you are you last? Especially in a generator, I think currently the type system mostly screws up if you have some parts of your models already trans translated to some level and some parts not. Um, yeah. Does it screw up? Does it screw up? Sorry? Some parts does it, some are not, and... Uh, yeah, so quickly then you can completely forget any information you get from the type system. So yep. the new thing, any... handle this in any specific way? Uh, so... I can't answer now, but... Uh, I can't answer how it is different from the legacy type system at this point, but... I think about it. I understand that you use the node attributes to so annotate the, the model with type information. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Just that the mechanism. So, if you go to the generation, you could keep the node attributes. Yeah. It's also a plan to make uh, the transformation language more sound. So I can create uh, my own uh, rules uh, and use them via a language, or can I provide them? How do I provide those rules? Uh, so the mechanism of uh, creates the type check and do the type check is the same. Okay. About this and, uh, well, uh, it's another aspect in the. Uh, now it is a new aspect, yes, and there is a notion to, uh, to enable the new aspect uh, instead of the old one. And at this point, it is. So. Can I? Um, how do I manage? Uh, maybe I read your. Sorry. I just read your documentation first. Uh, <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> Too many questions in my head. Thank you. Um, so, if there are no more questions, then thank you. Okay.